Kuvira is a character that stayed truthful to respecting different political ideologies. That is, until the show needed her to be a villain, then between two episodes, she was retconned into Adolf. Today, we'll be looking at why she was genuinely a fantastic character to explore politics and fiction, then how she was absolutely ruined. I'm pretty sure saying the H-Man's name in this video will get either demonetized or suppressed in the algorithm, but just to be clear, if you've seen Legend of Korra, Kuvira is literally just Woman Adolf, not Artist. Although, if you've never seen Legends of Korra before, or Season 4, I'll give you a quick rundown of just who exactly Kuvira is. Kuvira is a military general born into the Earth Kingdom with an edge for metalbending. She's very disciplined, serious, and devout to her beliefs. Those beliefs being Earth Kingdom supremacy, and she is on a warpath to reclaim all parts of the Earth Kingdom to restore it to its former glory. Sounds a lot like why Russia invaded Ukraine, to which Kuvira does her own version of that, but that's the season finale and is just a cherry on top with how poorly she was handled at political representation. For continuity, after after Zaheer assassinated the Earth Queen in the previous season, Kuvira volunteered to fill in diplomatically and militarily until the heir to the throne could be crowned. For the first half of the season, Kuvira was very reasonable, traveling across her kingdom, bringing food and water to villages that need it, stomping out gangs and evil organizations. By all means, Kuvira is a hero to the people of the Earth Kingdom, but because she doesn't really believe in a Bill of Rights or anything of the like, a lot of towns don't feel comfortable rejoining the Earth Kingdom because they like the extra freedom. This could be chalked up to the mayors and chiefs of the towns and villages like the idea of themselves being the head honcho and Kuvira repeatedly made it a point to these people that if you can barely keep food on the plates of your citizens, you're probably kind of bad at this. Meanwhile, Kuvira's leadership has led the entire nation to prosperity in only three years. Now, um, is Kuvira a fascist who believes her own will overrides the will of those around her? Yeah, that's pretty bad, but let's also acknowledge that her accomplishments are so great that she is literally titled the Great Uniter, and her name will be remembered for all of history for her achievements. Now, the issue is, we can belittle this achievement by saying she stood on the backs of previous technological and social evolutions. Well, yeah, that's always the case, but Kuvira is pushing technology and living standards up across the largest and most unwieldy the nation on the globe. Remember, there's crime all across the Earth Kingdom. There's plenty of gangs and underground circuits. These have been elaborated upon in the Avatar Kyoshi books, but even for the best rulers, keeping the magnitude of the Earth Kingdom from crumbling under itself like the Roman Empire is not an easy task. Kuvira not only put its pieces back together, but furthered it. I really like this detail and it gets overlooked too much. This is the inspiration behind why Kuvira is a fascist. She saw the previous leadership over the Earth Kingdom get too relaxed. She saw its citizens get too much freedom, gangs weren't stopped out, uprisings happened, the wealthy and powerful became content in their own bubbles, and rather than restore order, they made moneyed interests with gangs to save their own skin. Kuvira saw the selfish nature of human beings give in to corruption, and blames that for being the reason why the Earth Kingdom became a laughingstock. The Earth Kingdom was big, but there was so much division that its culture became weak, and the government lost its own power to just criminal organize all across the place. The place was literally too large to govern properly. Kuvira's solution to prevent this is makes people's lives good. So the populace likes the government again, helping to restore people's faith in the system and then crush future dissent. When I say crush dissent, I mean literally prevent gangs and shit from forming. There's like a weird implication that Kuvira is thought policing people, but we see Kuvira treat Bolin and her sister-in-law with respect and gives them room to air out their grievances with her governance system without repercussion. So people in the show will insinuate that that's what Kuvira is doing, but then the show literally first-hand evidence that that is not the case. We'll get into the concentration camp stuff later, so bear with me for now. I really like how Kuvira was introduced. It's clear that she's the big bad of this season, but she's not inherently evil. She's just fascist. The twist is she genuinely thinks fascism is a good idea, and this season is going to be all about politics and the idea of freedom and Martin Luther King stuff. One of the things I hate about season four is how everyone treats Kuvira like a villain right off the bat, just because Republic City and their Yas Queen democracy are oh so important. Which is really funny because the previous three seasons of this show all leaned into authoritarianism, and as far as the Avatar canon goes, Kuvira is par for the course. Everyone is losing their goddamn minds over Kuvira leading a nation, but it's like, somebody leads literally every nation? This show literally got a Zuko cameo, 
and paraded Tenzin around as a shit eater without a single leadership bone in his body and uses his position of power as an excuse to be bossy and belittle Korra to the point where she gives him the finger. That is the subtext around season two. Korra goes to work with Unalak because everyone else is just being disrespectful towards her. Tenzin is the leader of the Air Nation. Korra's dad is the leader of the Water Nation. Zuko gets a cameo. We literally see the leader of every single nation in this show, but suddenly when Kuvira leads the nation, she's just an evil dictator who wants power, 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 and doesn't actually care about the civilians. Well, the show simultaneously establishes that she has provided so much more for her people than any Earth Kingdom ruler has before her. It's really contrary, so the show demonstrates this happening, but then the characters talk amongst themselves and pretend like the opposite is the truth. I think Republic City is literally the only place in the show where democracy exists, but even then, the series shows how even that can be corrupted as politicians are voted for, but then look out for themselves and do nothing for the taxpayers immediately following that. The Avatar series has absolutely no problem with fascism up until Kuvira. Then the show hypes her up as literally the best ruler to ever grace the planet. But suddenly everybody has an issue with her form of government, but ignoring everyone else's. Kuvira doesn't care about leadership. She sees a nation full of people who are just trying to get by weak, sick, getting their property stolen. She gives zero shits about the aristocrats and diplomats and their ivory towers who don't have to deal with these issues, which just so happen to be the people this show likes to use as their characters. Diet Zuko, Bolin, they are like the only characters that came from nothing. They're the only people from the lower class in this show. They're the only characters that are subservient to the many rulers in the main cast. Bolin works under Kuvira. Nobody is as excited about everything Kuvira is doing as he is because he is somebody who had to deal with the triple threat triad and scrounge up money on the streets. Bolin has a very real understanding of all the good Kuvira is bringing to the entirety of the Earth Nation. Mako, I finally remembered his name, has no issue with anything going on. He literally works for the prince in season 4, which he has no issue with. He just finds the prince to be exceptionally annoying and the job boring, so he doesn't like it. But that's it. They have no issues with the system of governance. Kuvira's version is the same system that they're used to, but this time we've got somebody promising to protect the little guy. When we look at Kuvira, without rest, she breathed life back into the dying Earth Kingdom and resurrected it to the glory it hasn't held for millennia. Season 4 wasn't even a whole anti-fascism stick anyway because when Kuvira was defeated, ownership of the Earth Kingdom was handed over to Wu in a heartbeat. In that moment, Kuvira's entire message was lost. Kuvira wanted the government to look out for the common folk. She wanted the Earth Kingdom to protect its people for once, not use them as fodder for anarcho-capitalism. By that, I'm referencing the Avatar Kyoshi books, in which Kyoshi reveals that the Earth Kingdom is riddled with corruption, like, buy off the gangs nearby, that'll yield better social status than, like, being a law-abiding citizen. Anyways, that is what Kuvira cared about. She probably would have done kinder methods to achieve her utopia, but she felt as though she had to overcorrect and go super hardline about her rule. She's familiar with Earth Kingdom history, but she's been let down as she's learned more and more about all the rulers across history who did nothing but pad their own pockets and let people starve and get massacred. Kuvira knew nobody else would put in a fraction of the effort she would because nobody cares as much as she does about her own nation. This is why she believes nobody else can do it. It has to be her. Nobody else would be as dedicated to her goal as she is because the rest of the world already had their opportunity thousands of times. There's nothing wrong with Korra or Kuvira's parents for disagreeing with Kuvira's method of rule, but they rarely talked about it. They always talked down on her for simply being in a position of power. They always disrespected her, and they tried to forcibly stop her. But diplomacy was all they needed to do. They didn't once try to reason with her in a way that wasn't, you're not the rightful owner of the Earth Kingdom. You're an evil person for not giving the largest kingdom over to a literal child. That's Princess Wu's birthright. Yeah. Kuvira is the most progressive character in the entire show because she's actually just a left-wing extremist. Season 4 was all about an oppressed woman climbing the ranks of the elite with her own blood, sweat, and tears, giving the biggest nation in the world a glow up, working to save and protect all the common folk, and then telling the planet's elites to go fuck themselves. But instead, the writers decided to vilify her and retcom into Adolf the Not Artist, ignore her lore, and just turn her into a less interesting Unalak. As far as the fascist characters go in media, she's fantastic, but then the writer's sins come in in episodes seven and beyond. On that note, Kuvira didn't embrace any villainy until Korra and the rest officially labeled her an enemy. 
At that point, everybody had their guns turned towards her and she was forced to defend herself and make Barrett create their metaphorical atomic bomb. Everyone else pushed her into the box of villainy and blocked off the exit. She couldn't back down because then she would be handing over every single one of her achievements, and she would be handing them over to the very system that got the Earth Kingdom into such a dire state in the first place. It would have all been for naught. Korra and team pushed her to commit war crimes because they didn't want to do diplomacy. Their literal job. Season 4 was framed as taking down the big bad government when in reality, it was the complete opposite and became a fictional masterclass on how to use propaganda to make situations look backwards. Addressing the concentration camps and puritanical stuff that Kuvira did in the show, that stuff doesn't really make any sense given what her character is all about, her backstory, the things she did in the early episodes, nor taking into account her atonement in the comics following season 4. The writers just threw in awful, evil acts in order to go, yay, we have officially retconned Kuvira into being a bad person. Now she can be our villain without us having to do any work at all. She had the best intentions of anybody in this entire show, worked the hardest to achieve them, and didn't woe is me her head off like everyone else, but because the writers already had the intention of making her the big bad, they had to completely flip her character inside out just to make taking her down feel justified. It feels as though the show changed writing staff halfway through, but despite episode 7 and onwards being a fucking dumpster fire, episodes 1 through 6 were so good that I feel like it makes up for it and makes season 4 my favorite season of Korra. Subscribe if you want me to talk about more Korra stuff, let me know if you want me to make an abridgment of season 4, but you know, with my own spin on good Kuvira, and make sure to hit the like button too. I would appreciate that very much. Peace.